It is Friday, June 2nd, 2023. Guess who I'm here with? I am here with the great Professor Elias. Hey, have a great weekend. <laughs> so uh, we decided to get off the couch this morning, come up here and do a little bit of training. And unfortunately, uh, there's nobody here. Nobody we know, none of our friends showed up, just me and the professor. So I guess everybody's at home sitting on the couch, vaping and watching Netflix today. Uh, while we're out here 94 degrees in the sun and just getting some training in and my recommendation for this weekend is do the same get your body in better shape get out do some training get to the range work on your security work on your preparations work on your finances and work on your body and most of all work on your spirit your soul that's the most important we're here for a short period of time so make sure you know where you're going after this but i want to get into a few things today uh, with the professor uh, on this beautiful friday and before we got here uh, I checked the market. Dow Jones was up nearly 700 points today as I left the house. I don't know where it is right now. It could be 1,000. It could be 200. I have no idea. But when I, right before I left the house, it was 684 points. Non-farm payrolls grew much more than expected. The number came in at 393,000 jobs. The economists expected the number to come in at 190,000. Now I've got to ask the professor who is a small business owner, do you believe these numbers? They expected 190,000 jobs. We got 393,000 jobs. Yet uh, every week, it's more and more people filing uh, a jobless claims. It's more and more people getting laid off uh, in, in the mortgage business, in tech, in retail. Do you believe these numbers anymore? It's difficult, man. It's really difficult. I mean, maybe, um Maybe they're uh, getting involved or getting employed by the yoga pant companies. I, oh, Lululemon, I, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, Lululemon yeah. might yeah. be hiring. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, it's it's really difficult to think that uh, right now in the economy that we're having that you have uh, that many jobs. But who knows? I mean, it's 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 difficult to believe anything right now. <laughs> so that is the 29th straight month of job growth. Wow. And we're in a recession. Okay, everybody out there knows we're in a recession. We've had 29 months of job growth, yet every week it's 220,000 plus people filing jobless claims. Every day it's thousands of people losing jobs. And so we're supposed to believe this data today. You can believe whatever you want to believe. I don't believe it, but I will tell you this. The market uh, up today uh, is very excited about the debt ceiling being raised. I believe it's being signed today by the president. And what does this mean? Well, obviously it means something because the market's up almost 700 points right now, the Dow Jones. Uh, it means that we're gonna have a lot more money printing, a lot more uh, borrowing of money, and a lot more inflation. These markets don't, to me, doesn't they don't even care about inflation now. It cares about the easy, quick, printed money. Uh, today they were saying, well, the market's up because of the, this incredible job growth. Well, I don't believe, I, I believe the opposite. The market should be down because the market realizes that Jerome Powell now at the Fed is going to raise interest rates in June. They're looking at the jobs data going, the labor market is too tight. Everybody's working. Wages are going up. Unemployment all time low. Stock market up 700 points. What do you think Jerome Powell's going to do? He's going to raise rates. And Professor Elias on this beautiful Friday, Raising interest rates, what does this mean for small business? What does this mean for the consumer? What does this mean for your friends and my friends? What I think of, uh, the only thing that makes sense to me and what I see directly like every day is raise of cost. Like something has to give. So uh, every time I go to the store, every time I go to the, to go buy like a, uh, JB was talking about yesterday a cup of tea or a, uh, some iced tea. It's the cost is enormous. I actually went to uh, uh, Jolly, uh, not sorry, not Jolly Boo, but Chipotle today. And Chipotle burritos used to be eight ninety nine, and uh, now Chipotle burritos are. I think it, if I'm not mistaken, it was eleven ninety nine. And I haven't been in a couple of weeks. It literally in a couple of weeks raised a few dollars, and. Um, that's something unusual. I, I mean, something has to give. So maybe the numbers, all the numbers are looking good and going up, but the things that you're having to pay for are also going oh, up. No doubt. And it, it's interesting you said that. I went to the store about three days ago, did some shopping, and I got some catfish. I like to do uh, deep fried catfish. Did some deep fried catfish the other night. Catfish, this is at Winco, discount grocery store, our favorite, right? Yep. Winco, the best discount. You can't get really, I mean, hard to beat their prices. $12 for a pound of catfish $12 I remember it was 650 not that long ago $12 for a pound of catfish 
So, and then you were talking about today, the whole tip issue that I was talking about yesterday. Where, where were you? What happened? Yeah, I went to go to a cookie place to take my wife some cookies at work. I went to a tea place to take her some tea. And both places um, were talking about, like, the cookies were $42.5 and the tea was $8. And they asked for a tip. Now, me, unlike JB, I felt guilty. So, I gave $2 <laughs> on, both, on both. But they got me. Yeah, that, that's how they get you. You're, they're literally right standing right in front of you, turning the computer direction or the computer towards your direction and say, go ahead and fill out the rest of the paperwork. And I'm just like, Ugh, just spent $42 <laughs> on cookies, but I'm going to put $2 because this person yeah. looking in front of me, don't, I feel bad for him. Don't give this guy a lot of hate for spending $42 on cookies and leaving a tip. And he's a third degree black, <laughs> third degree black belt. And he, he got intimidated by the tip. I mean, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. But you know, uh, this whole debt ceiling debacle, the interest rates going up. Uh, look, this whole debt ceiling is going to do nothing but make the wealthy more wealthy and it's going to make the poor and middle class more poor today they were talking on uh, fox business credit card debt 986 billion dollars we're approaching a trillion dollars of credit card debt in the u.s uh, i don't know when this is going to finally come to an end ladies and gentlemen but when it does it is going to be so catastrophic and that's really you know why we're out just getting a good workout today working on security uh just you know getting a good little sweat going getting a little vitamin d in the sun here uh, we, we had a good session on the mats yesterday in jujitsu uh, i'll be back monday but uh yeah we had a good session yesterday a nice little class yesterday yeah, went amazing. hard yeah great training always i mean anytime you can break a sweat and uh, at the same time learn self-defense while you're doing it uh best i mean uh the weights won't hit back if you're coming to train jujitsu you're gonna you're gonna feel and you're doing up. a new channel on YouTube. What is it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's under my name. So it's going to be Elias Ramirez. And I'm the third. So spell Elias, E-L-I-A-S-R-A-M-I-R-E-Z. E -L -I -A -S -R -A -M -I -R -E -Z, and then Roman numerals are I-I-I. -I -I. And uh, it's the third. It's going to be talking mainly about jujitsu, but we're going to try to cover uh, self-defense aspects, things like that. So in the beginning, I'm going to talk about some stories about myself and uh, uh, my jujitsu journey. But at the same time, my opinions about jujitsu, but also my opinions about what's going on out there as a whole in a self-defense sense. I think it's really important for more people to start channels like that. The importance of self-defense, the importance of getting the body and really jujitsu is getting the, bo the body and the, the, the spirit in shape, in my opinion. And it's human chess. It's extremely important for you, your kids. Yes. And you know, if you have the means, uh, there's no excuse. If you're in decent shape, uh, you don't have to be in great shape. If you want to get in great shape, do jujitsu. Yeah. It's probably one of the best things you could do to get into shape. So I highly recommend it. So check his channel out. What are you gonna do, a couple videos a week? Yep, a couple videos a week, as many as possible. So let's support him. We gotta support people like this uh, who, who really, you know, have a good message and want to see everybody have success, uh, want to see people prosper, want to see people not be victims. And that's why, you know, uh, Professor Elias here is such a good friend of mine because we're so like-minded. We want to see people have success. We want to see people prosper. We don't want to see people victimized. We don't want to see them lose. We don't want to see them be st statistics of crime. We want people to be able to take care of themselves and their families. That's why we're out here training today. That's why we we're on the mats yesterday. Just trying to get a little bit quicker, a little bit faster, a little bit lighter. And that's what that's why we're here. And um, I was reading an article today, and maybe, maybe some of you have seen this one too. I think it was out of Cleveland, Ohio. 30 children have gone missing in the last two weeks. And we just had uh, an incident happen in Temecula, California, one of the safest areas in the country, really, if not uh, the safest in California, where a young girl was out playing with her dad and the dad went in really quick to grab his phone or something. He was gone for literally 10 seconds and somebody came walking down the sidewalk, tried to kidnap this girl. I think she was about 10, 12 years old. Yep. And I bring this up because, you know, there's no guarantee in life. Uh, there's nothing that's 100% foolproof, but we always try to put the odds in our favor. So, you know, if you can't get to that weapon or that tool, then all you can do is rely on your body as a weapon. And maybe all you need to do is get distance to get to your car, to get in your house, to get to the phone, to get to, to that tool. Maybe you just need distance. Maybe you just have to win the fight. Maybe you just have to get distance and run. That little girl probably would, wouldn't be able to, to beat up an adult man who tried to kidnap her. But, and luckily she ran and knew, knew right away to run yes. back into the house. And he went after her. But let's just say 
the things didn't work out that way and the guy actually grabbed her. Okay, she's probably 70 pounds. This guy's 170 pounds. She's not gonna beat him in a fight, but if she had enough jujitsu skill, she would be able to hold him off long enough to scream, wait, hopefully her dad would be right back out, or to break loose and have that distance have that separation to run back to the house. What do you think? What do you, you saw it, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and like, if you, you have a responsibility, if not uh, self-defense or get involved with some sort of self-defense for yourself, you have a responsibility to get involved with self-defense for your, your wife, your kids, uh, everybody in your household, especially if you're the head of your household is going to rely on you to defend them. And so even if uh, like something as far as defense is not something you want to get involved with right away, you should because of the people that you are responsible for. So, uh, like this little girl, uh, his wife, anybody that could be a victim. Uh, and even if it's not you, or it should be you, but if it's you, it should also be them as well so they can defend themselves. It's, um, it's still amazing to me to think how we can walk around and believe that there's no danger out there and uh, not have any kind of defense that can help us make sure that we can protect ourselves in a dark alley. Right. Uh, this wasn't a dark alley in Temecula. No, no, it was broad daylight, <laughs> broad daylight. in a neighborhood. But jujitsu really is an equalizer. And pray to God you never have to use it, but I can tell you personally, I have in real life and it worked. So, and I know Professor has. And so it's so important that if you have the means, I think it's a great investment. It's a great, we talk about assets every day. And look, this isn't always about financial. A lot of it's about spiritual. A lot of, a lot of yes. it is physical. One of the best assets you're gonna have is your security. And that doesn't just mean knowing how to operate a, a tool or just having, uh, a tactical education or a tactical background, but having your body as an asset, uh, having your body being able to defend uh, yourself or somebody else. And so I think it's so important. But again, there's nothing foolproof, but what about putting the odds in your favor? You know that most of these bad people have no training whatsoever. If you have a little bit of training, you're already leaps and bounds ahead of these people. You already put the odds in your favor uh, of being victorious and winning a fight, uh, or at least getting away, not being a victim. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, not being a victim. Yes, absolutely. You know, you don't want to be the person on the subway getting punched in the face 13 times while, while 18 people are filming it and, and you know, not doing anything not about it. <laughs> right. You, you know, I mean, you don't want to be that person. So, you know, make sure that uh, y that you have the skill set and the mindset. And, you know, things like this are, are going to test you when you go and train. You know, I, I train with a professor or, or if I'm in a class, you know, it's pushing me. It's pushing my physical limits and it gets you used, you know, to somebody putting their hands on you. Right. Um, I've said this before. If we're walking down the street and somebody puts hands on us, we're not going to like freak out and panic because every day people are putting hands on us. It's just another day at the office. But but 99% of the population is going to panic. Many people will just wet their pants because they've never had somebody just walk up and grab them. And this is happening every day. And you're watching it happen every day on these videos. People don't help. They videotape and watch while you get assaulted. You don't want to be that person. So get used uh, to dealing with this right now. D learn how to deal with force right now. I cannot um, emphasize that enough. Professor, anything you want to say about that? Yeah, I mean, just talking about what he's talking about, but also like with, I've watched videos all the time of kids uh, being in a self-defense situation and uh, there's a ton of kids around and whoever put that video, they just watched. It's they entertaining. Didn't, they didn't jump in. Yeah. I mean, nobody went in to help, but luckily the videos that I watch uh, are videos of girls or boys who know jujitsu, so they're protecting themselves. Uh, I can only imagine how many of those videos are put out there of someone who doesn't know a self-defense and they're getting recorded having a fight and 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 hurt getting hurt so hurt so rise to the occasion rise to the occasion so yeah, another thing i want to talk about while i have the professor here is just what i don't know if you're watching some of these videos walgreens the walmarts the the coles the you name it this organized crime where people are just going in ransacking uh 7-elevens gas stations restaurants you name it have you ever seen anything like this you know it's funny you say that <laughs> this is it correlates directly to what you were talking about uh yesterday kind of indirectly but i just read an article that lululemon i know yoga pants just uh let go of two employees who followed three guys out of the store who had stole a ton of merchandise yep. uh walked to their car and they followed them just got their driver's license and turned it into the police and were let go mm -hmm 
because they did the right thing. Like, man. So why would anybody? To, you're supposed to just, the, the, the reason they were let go is Lululemon wanted them to just let them walk out with the thousand dollar, the thousands of dollars worth of merchandise. It's unbelievable, man. I think, um, yeah, man. I mean, like you were saying, you gotta, you gotta like have some type of protection now if you're a part of a, a store or something like that. Hey, walking down the street. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't know. You're you're walking down the street. You're you're shopping at a grocery store. You don't know um, what's gonna happen. You know, if you're. That's the thing too. Is like you're at grocery stores. Imagine if you're at a grocery store. Not to name cities, but I've just seen a ton in San Francisco on the articles I've been reading. Imagine you're in San Francisco at a place like Whole Foods that you think you're gonna be just absolutely just safe in, and all of a sudden a walkthrough of just a bunch of thieves come in to just take stuff. There were imagine? there were almost 600 calls to 911 from that store. Ah, okay. Could you imagine if you were in there when those things happened? Oh yeah, people defecating on the floor. Ah. 600 calls to the 600 calls Different to the police. Or... Terrible, and it's shut down. So it didn't even last a year. Yep. Shut down. And so you know the people who want to shop at that nice store now cannot shop at that store. Uh, four WalMarts shop uh, that that are closing in Chicago because of the crime infestation. Now those people don't have a Walmart, and prices go up. Right? People just go, oh, the insurance will pay for it. Well, who do you think's paying the rising insurance costs? We are. You know, when cars get stolen, when people don't drive around with insurance, when st stores are getting uh, robbed, who pays for the losses? The consumer pays for that stuff. That's why everything is going up. You got inflation, and on top of the inflation, you have all this theft. So, uh, uh, we all have to pay for it. So we're paying for the inflation, we're paying for the theft and, and, and the inconvenience because if that, that store that you like to shop at goes under or that restaurant because of the theft, well, now you got to go farther to the next one, uh, farther, you know, if you're in a rural area, you may only have one Walmart. Like if I, that thing closes, you're done. And I was looking at Target. Uh, they were talking like the Target. They're not closing the Targets in some cities. What they're doing is they're locking everything up at the things that they're closing in Target or at the Targets that they're having. There. So they're not closing them. But imagine the inconvenience in going in and, and buying some shaving cream and you have to find an employee to come unlock the uh, the cabinet for you so you can buy some shaving yeah, cream. Right, right. I mean, so, that's inconvenience at it. It's finest. So Walgreens, I was just reading that today. Uh, Walgreens is like running these new test stores where literally the whole store is locked up and you're going to have to get somebody to unlock whatever you want. Before it used to be just, you know, the high-end stuff, the razor blades and things like that. Now it's going to be the entire store literally. And so what an inconvenience that's going to be too. And so it, it just, we all have to pay the price here because of this. But you, when you allow people to steal, is it $995 and basically just walk um, with a ticket, uh, there's no consequences. This is what's going to happen. We're all going to pay the price. Well, one of the things that that's that's causing that as well is you have uh, you know those so many loss of jobs. Uh, this is people are thinking, man, if I if I can't get a job, why not go steal nine hundred dollars worth of merchandise, sell that on the black market yeah, or wherever yeah, it is yeah. they're selling it, and that's guess what, creating a higher insurance cost, like JB said, which you have to pay for. So I mean, every it's even like why get a job? If you can Get go away. spend two minutes to walk in somewhere, take anything you want, go sell that for another hour and be done with work in an hour and a half. Why go work an eight hour job if you can do that? I mean, right. it's, it's, it's giving the wrong message yeah. to people that, hey, steal, go make money another way. Don't worry about all of these. So it's, it's crazy to think that there's so many jobs. Maybe there's so many jobs available because nobody's taking them. Yeah. Well, hey, I, I mean, there has to be some jobs available. Unfortunately, most of them are minimum wage hospitality jobs. But yeah, it's easier to, now to just go steal. And, and let's face it, a lot of people in this country don't want to work. There's no doubt about that. There are people that do want to work. There's a lot of people and a lot more people that don't want to work that would rather take the easy handouts or like uh, Professor Elias here said, we'd rather go steal because there's no consequences. We're rewarding it. We're rewarding bad behavior. While 70% uh, of the US GDP is based on consumer spending, okay? So we have to have consumer spending money to keep this whole machine going because we don't make anything here. We buy things with money we don't have. Think about that. 70% of our GDP is based on the US consumer spending money. And guess what? The US consumer is getting tapped out. And on top of that, now they're dealing with all the theft, the rising prices of inflation and, and the rising price uh, because of theft. And the consumer is getting tapped out. It says um, in this article uh, on the hedge today, 75% of Americans are worse off than they were just a couple years ago. One in three cannot cover a $400 emergency. Barely half of Americans have three months of savings put away. My question is to all of you and to the professor today is how bad is this going to look when this economy busts loose? When half of this country 
uh, can barely survive for three months when a third can't even cover a $400 emergency. If you had to go to the emergency room, they said it'd be $2,200. Half this country couldn't even go to the emergency room uh, right now in America because it would cost $2,200 and they don't have the money. And so a lot of people are in a very, very difficult situation and it's about to get much more difficult because we know the economy is going to slow down much more. We're going to see this whole bottom fall out. This whole thing is, is a house of cards built, built on quicksand. We all know that. And the scary thing is here, the concerning thing is, is the average consumer, most of America is not prepared for it. They have a trillion dollars of credit card debt. They have 1.5, $1.6 trillion of auto loan debt, $1.7 trillion of student loan debt. How do you think this plays out? Uh, it, it doesn't uh, make you want to watch the news, I'll tell you that. It yeah. makes you not want to watch the news. Yeah, you think crime's uh, bad now. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be, uh, I'm not looking forward to that. No, and so, but I'm not either, but I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do everything I can to put the odds in my favor. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take JB's advice. I'm gonna <clears throat> invest in gold, invest in silver, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put money away. Invest in jujitsu, <laughs> invest in, in, in the gym. Myself. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is a time you really, and the professor at the nail head, this is a time to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself, have skill sets, okay? Have a little gold, a little silver put away. You're, you're paying off all your debts. Oh yeah, by the end of the year, we'll be debt free. Debt free. Have you ever mentioned on your channel the, the story you told me about the $20 Armani suit? Well, go ahead. Yeah, so a really uh, quick example that JB gave me is he said, you know, back in the 1920s, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, you can, for an ounce of gold, buy a, a, a $20 Armani suit. Uh, a suit that was $20. A beautiful or suit, whatever a beautiful suit. suit, whatever suit or it is. Or you could take a $20 bill. Or you could take a $20 yeah. bill, yeah. And now you can still buy a beautiful suit with an ounce of gold, but a $20 bill <laughs> wouldn't get you the buttons on the suit. That's right. <laughs> So I think everybody should have a little bit. That's not financial advice. But uh, yeah, invest in yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, it's not always about the financial aspect. It's not always about financial preparation. It's about spiritual preparation. It's about physical preparation. We know that this country, uh, we've never seen so many people sick. Uh, so many people out of shape and that's not to be judgmental uh, but we have we have an eating epidemic here in America and we have a control issue where people cannot control their spending they can't control their eating and I just think you're gonna be a much healthier person if you can control your spending control your eating and just have a strong mental mindset and have structure in your life nobody's perfect everybody can do better I could do better I could eat better I could train I could definitely be training more uh, I'm sure the professor would say the same thing nobody's perfect but you know what if you get off the couch today and make a little bit of an effort and you start to die and you're training one day a week and then maybe it's two days a week and three days a week I promise you you're gonna look back in six months and go man I am a way better person than I was six months ago if you're training in jujitsu and you walk through the doors of a jujitsu studio today and you stick with it six months from now you're gonna look back and go you're gonna have so much more confidence you're gonna be in such better shape you're just gonna look at yourself as a better human being with more confidence uh, more commitment, more structure in your entire life. It's gonna, it's gonna, you know, tra transform. I think your entire life, business, personal life, everything, because we have to put structure in our life. And I think that's what we're lacking so much in America today is people have no structure. They don't commit to anything. They don't stick to anything. And we've gotten really lazy, really soft, and we need to push ourselves. We have to put that structure in our life. We have to test ourselves because what's gonna happen is as we fall into the greatest depression the U.S. has ever seen, probably the world people are going to be tested, but they're not going to be prepared for the test. If you don't study, if you don't prepare for the test, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to fail. And this is going to be a life altering test. This is going to change lives for generations. Some people are not even going to survive it because they're going to lose everything. And there's going to be so much chaos and so much crime out there that we're going to see those levels go to places we've never seen before. And if you're not testing yourself right now, you will fail. Professor, any closing words? Uh, I was just, uh, the, the biggest advice I, I would give is just believe in yourself, believe in your eyes, believe in your ears, believe in what your bank account is telling you. If your bank account is going lower and you're thinking to yourself like, oh, it's just because for whatever I spent a little bit, believe that no, no, your bank account's going lower because things are getting more expensive. Uh, your eyes are not lying to you, your ears are not lying to you. The things that you're seeing, the things that you're feeling, believe that those are real, those are true. Uh, and and once you believe in those things, do something about it. Right, uh, right, Don't, like 
let's not fool ourselves. Don't reality fool. is reality. We are, we have to get out of the bubble. We have to get out of this this uh, this matrix. Get get and, rid of the noise. Don't yeah. don't listen to noise. Look with your own eyes. Listen with your own ears. Look at your financial situation. Look at the look at the bills. Take a second. I know nobody wants to look at their bills. Look at your credit card bills. Look at your debit bills, and look to see the cost you're spending now compared to two or three years ago, and believe that. Yep. And look at yourself. Look at your health. Could you be in better shape today? Don't make excuses. Don't make excuses about your health. Don't make excuses about your soul. Don't make excuses about your finances. Get right with God. Get right with your health and get right with your finances. God bless all of you. Have a phenomenal weekend. Get out, train, get out, prepare. God bless you all. Talk to you soon.